Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-3005. Object Class, Uncontained, Unknown. Special Containment Procedures SCP-3005 is to be located and contained as soon as is possible. Site-17 is to assume all responsibilities for containment of SCP-3005. Mobile Task Force Mu-17, Iron Horses, are to monitor the region for signs of SCP-3005 presence as a top priority objective and respond to any such evidence immediately. Recovered Procedural Information SCP-3005 is to be contained in a soundproof enclosure at Unit- For testing purposes, SCP-3005's chamber entrance is to be protected with an exposure foyer which allows researchers to bring testing items in proximity to SCP-3005 via a remote chamber without exposure to SCP-3005 emissions. Any attempt at direct contact with SCP-3005 must be made with Mode Venereset, Auditory Visual Cognito Hazard Countermeasures, and Mode Dubitomus Theological Threat Countermeasures. Tonal dissolution of the anchors under any circumstances. SCP-3005 in its pink state is not to be engaged by fewer than 11 personnel. If casualties are incurred during contact with SCP-3005, the bodies are to be dissolved. Do not bury, burn, or remain in contact with casualties incurred during contact with SCP-3005. And recovered procedural information. Description. Information regarding the appearance, behavior, and physical or metaphysical properties of SCP-3005 has been lost. Unit The facility which housed SCP-3005 is believed to have been destroyed following a catastrophic containment breach. Original containment document and accompanying records were corrupted by data loss or other means. SCP-3005 was not present when Foundation personnel made contact with the site. Following recovery efforts, segments of the original documentation for SCP-3005 are available to the Foundation. Only test log SCP-3005 is fully intact and cleared for unprotected viewing. Partial containment procedures have been provided, however their reliability is unverified. Recovered testing information. Evaluated but unverified. Test log SCP-3005. Example Entry Input Describe object or entity exposed here. Distance Describe the type of exposure here. Time List the duration of exposure here. Output List the results of exposure here. And finally, Comments Add relevant notes or personal remarks here. Testing Researcher Dr. Input One apple red delicious variety. Distance. Center of entrance foyer. Roughly 5 meters. Time. 8 minutes. Output. Apple has been rendered partially indistinct visually and to touch. Comments. It's hard to tell whether the apple is whole, cut, ripe, or rotted out. Input. 2 kilogram cube of iron. Distance. Center of entrance foyer. Time. 8 minutes. Output. No physical changes detected. Block continuously vibrated for approximately 64 minutes after exposure. Comments. The ringing was the worst thing about this test. I could barely think while it was making that awful noise. Eventually, I got used to it. When it stopped, I only noticed because the discomfort went away. Input. One apple, red delicious variety. Distance. Center of entrance foyer. Time, 20 minutes. Output, unknown. Comments, I have no idea what happened to the apple or where it is. Maybe it's in the chamber with SCP-3005, somehow. Input, 2 kilogram cube of iron. Distance, center of entrance foyer. Time, 20 minutes. Output, no physical changes detected block continuously vibrated for at least five hours. Comments. It sounded better this time. Input. One D-class subject. 
695-241. Distance, entrance foyer. Time, 8 minutes. Output, viscera. Comments. Subject appears to have been flung apart. Input. One document. Encyclopedia transcript containing basic factual information about the species Buteogemiasensis. Distance. Center of entrance foyer. Time, 8 minutes. Output. One document variable. Comments. Document might not be the right word, but I don't know what else to call it. It's like exposure to SCP-3005 shredded the paper and left information behind. It's slippery. Trying to pick it up changes it. First it's a socialist political system, then it's a way to cook pork using special equipment. I managed to scrape it into a bucket and stow it in a locker. When I check in on it, a party game stares up at me. Input. One D-class subject. 695-278. Distance. Entrance foyer. Time. Five minutes. Output. Moderate physical distress. Non-lethal. Severe mental distress. Comments. She's a mess. She threw up a few times. Not in the game's bucket. And eventually her stomach calmed down, but she's still in shock over being around that thing for so long. I cleaned up her fingers and she's recuperating. I'll call in a transfer to Psychoval. Input. One phonograph. Turned on. Distance. Center of entrance foyer. Time. 82 seconds. Aborted. Output. Comments. Had to stop the test early. Sound didn't get out of these, but it kept getting louder until I could feel the music rattling the facility. I was afraid that it was going to bring down the facility. Input. 1 D-Class Subject. 695-222. Distance. Entrance foyer. Time, 5 minutes. Output. Severe physical distress. Non-lethal. Comments. I sent him in to try and get as close to SCP-3005 if possible. Touch it if he can and try to make it respond. He got too close, but refused to enter the containment chamber itself. He was babbling about how SCP-3005 wouldn't let him near. Threatened him somehow to send him somewhere else and then be free. You can tell he got too close. I'll leave it to medical to describe the extent of the damage, but emotionally he's pretty okay. Makes a lot more sense than the last one. Actually, did she ever get transferred? Input. 1 D-Class Subject. 151, 515. Distance. Entrance foyer. Time, 55 minutes. Output. Viscera. Comments. It turns out I forgot to request a transfer for the first subject. I went to fix it, but she's not in the rest area. I don't know where she went. This has been a rough couple of days for me. I've been sleeping in my office lately because I don't feel like leaving work. It's been almost an hour. More tests. Input. 25 kilogram cube of iron. Distance. Center of entrance foyer. Time. 90 minutes. Output. No physical changes detected. Comments. Still ringing. Input. One. One D-class subject. 21, 21, 21. Distance, entrance foyer. Time. Two, two minutes. <clears throat> Output. Moderate physical and emotional distress. Comments. We cleaned this one up and helped them back up to speed. He'll recover fastest of all from the pink light. I requested the psych transfer, but... No, it has shown up yet. Input. Two D-class subjects. Distance. Entrance foyer. Time. Five. Output. Severe physical and mental distress. Viscera. Comments. This one was going to be another regular test, but the one from the last time wanted back in. He didn't make it this time. Or was the other one the one that flung apart? I remember their faces pretty well, but 
I don't think this one looks like either of them. Input. 1D class subject. 69278. Distance, entrance foyer. Time, 5 minutes. Output. Moderate physical distress. Non-lethal. Severe mental distress. Comments. They've been restless. The D-class. I call them D-class. I could swear one of them used to be Dr. Watkins. Need something to keep them occupied, but nothing makes sense to them anymore. Everything except the Betamax melted into the floor. I checked the tapes. I, <clears throat> I, I checked the tapes, and they are madness. Everyone keeps changing, but it should be enough to hold them at bay. Maybe now they'll stop playing that damn record on the intercom speakers. Input. Various Betamax and VHS tapes, books and compact discs. Distance. Gathered around the center of the entrance foyer. Time. Five. Output. Seven Betamax tape. Various. Variable. Seven. Comments. Just a repeat of the first D-Class test that worked. I copied over everything, including the D-Class number. <sighs> Better than making them up. It's a completely different person. Anyway, I needed to replace the first one because the new one told me she was dead. I asked him to deal with the body and he said, Don't worry about the body. I'm surprised because she wasn't flung apart and I haven't seen anyone else in here in a long while. Who deals with the bodies? Is anyone cleaning the test chamber? Input. One power drill. One. Distance. Entrance foyer. Time. Not applicable. Output. Three centimeter gap in a CB-3005 containment chamber. Comments. I needed to do this. They're all smarter than I am. Not well, smarter, really. Higher up. I'm in charge. I'm the doctor. But how long is that going to last? I keep getting... confused. And look what they've been doing with the staff. Turns out that there's a good reason I haven't seen anyone around lately. I guess this is why they terminate all these guys after a month. Whatever's going on, I can't think about it right now. I've seen the light, and I'm... so confused. How did I know it was pink? Input. Doctor. Distance. Opposite wall. Where the pink light lands. Time. Not applicable. Output. See comments. Comments. <sighs> I knew I needed the pink light, but I didn't want it like they had it. It works on brains different from how bodies work. So I drilled a hole right through the chamber, right at the forehead level. Let a shaft of pink light shine straight in, shimmering like through water. It hums when I touch it, which is the secret. It reaches straight into my head. It doesn't have to leave my organs like apples. What I'm actually learning doesn't go here. I'll be keeping a notebook for it. Input 1D class subject. Distance. Entrance foyer. Time. One. One minute. One. One minute. One. Minute. One minute. Output. Moderate mental distress. Moderate physical distress. Severe physical distress. Severe mental distress. Viscera. Comments. One of the other D-Class. I don't have a number. The database keeps failing. They want it back in, so I gave them a minute at a time. Each time I asked for more information about it, eventually they stopped making sense. The, the pink light hasn't been helping that. Probably I need more of it. At least they were flung apart. I heard the D-Class talking outside my office when they thought I was sleeping. <laughs> They've been breaking in. They've been playing the game. Input. Doctor. Distance. The light. Time. Non-applicable. Output. Non-applicable. Comments. These are not the only worlds. There are many times and few worlds, and these are two of them. I'm going to 
thought if I had thought that the pink light builds upon, that it gives you this other place, your other self, forces them into you until you're flung apart. No! <laughs> the pink light strips, strips away and takes from you. <laughs> takes that special part that keeps you there in that first world and brings you here, this light outshines your inner light until it's gone. I write in my notebook about SCP-3005 and what I think it was made for and why it began to give off the pink light and why it can never stop. I can't leave the facility. None of us can. We aren't ready for what's out there. My notebook is full. Input 1 Betamax camcorder running. Distance center of entrance for a time. Five minutes. Output. Broken. Melted in space. The tape still works. Comments. Video on. Audio off. Can look directly now. Not too much damage. Nobody here to read this. Maybe D-class when I'm away. But I'll need to tell the director or an overseer or anyone who can tell everybody to stop using those. All of you. They're chained and lobotomized, but all it takes is to catch the surf. Safe on the shore, but it's the last thing you want to hold when you're drowning. And put one notebook. Distance. Entrance foyer. Time. Five minutes. Five minutes. Output. One religion. Comments. I like the tide is shining in the water. Input T class subject non applicable. Non applicable. Non applicable. Distance containment chamber. Time five. Output this room. Comments. They all went in. They still had me do it. Maybe they still respected that I was the doctor. Maybe they just wanted to leave me out. Even if I'm half there already. Even if I can't tell what is there and what isn't. Can you? And I have a special plan. I always covered up the hole I drilled so they didn't see it. I have another way in. I can find out what I've forgotten. There are no more test subjects and nobody else. There is only one way in. The booth needs to be operated, but I have a special plan. Don't worry about the body. I just need to know if my shaft of pink light will make me flung apart. Input. Distance. Time. Output. Comment. This concludes today's lecture. Thank you for listening, if indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed. Goodbye. So, I'm sure some of you, like me, are slightly confused or have questions about the document that you just listened to. So, for occasions like this, I'm starting a new segment that I'm calling Extra Credit, where I can discuss an anomaly without being confined to the in-universe format you're all accustomed to. Think of it as a fourth wall break that serves to make this content more accessible to everyone. In Extra Credit, I'll typically be using the work of people much smarter than me to help explain an anomaly. In this case, this person is Modulum83 from the SCP Declassified subreddit. 
Links to the post and Modulum's author page will be in the video description, and if they would like to leave a comment under this video to promote whatever they like, I'll pin that comment, and hopefully we're all happy. So, SCP-3005, a light that died. SCP-3005 explores the idea of horror in two fashions. One, through the usage of classic word salad madness and dream logic, and two, the idea that the Foundation has no idea how to deal with something. The basic idea, in fact, is very, very simple. A Scranton reality anchor is malfunctioning because it can't figure out which reality to anchor itself to. There are also tie-ins with fifthism, star signals, and other Lovecraftian elements. But we're looking at this from a decidedly confusing frame. This story about madness bleeding into our world is taken from an angle that forces us to be drip-fed hints about what's going on, adding to the tone of confusion and eldritchness. Here's what we know about the containment procedures. SCP-3005 has emissions, and people must be protected against auditory or visual cognito hazards, total disillusion, and anchors. Already then, there are lots of hints. What this is getting at is that SCP-3005 is pretty dangerous. It has radiating dangerous effects on reality around it that necessitate detailed containment procedures. And think about it this way. Picture a Scranton reality anchor as something that counterbends reality to the Foundation's idea of consensus reality. If you weren't part of consensus reality, this effect would be horrific and jarring, right? The testing log next describes what happens when objects from our world are exposed to the anchor. Don't worry, I'll explain the fifthism connection when I get to it. First, they put an apple five meters away from the anchor for eight minutes. What happens is really unnerving. Apple has been rendered partially indistinct visually and to touch. The rendering of reality is spazzing out like a computer game. The block of iron. The ringing was the worst thing about this test. I could barely think while it was making that awful noise. Eventually, I got used to it. When it stopped, I only noticed because the discomfort went away. It's as if things exposed to SCP-3005 somehow become wrong in our reality. It adds a quality of notness to things. 20 minutes of an apple, and the output is unknown. A D-class for 8 minutes? Viscera. Ugh. They put a document in and something really freaky happens. It's like exposure to SCP-3005 shredded the paper and left information behind. It's slippery. Trying to pick it up changes it. First it's a socialist political system, then it's a way to cook pork using special equipment. I managed to scrape it into a bucket and stow it in a locker. When I check in on it, a party game stares up at me. All these logs are trying to reinforce one fact. This object shreds everything about our perception of reality. The very building blocks of logic that we are based on are being broken apart by this malfunctioning anchor. Oh, by the way, this is where the fives start getting really crazy that I might have missed in my adaptation because it didn't really translate that well to an audio adaptation. Five, five in brackets minutes, one, one in brackets, one D-class subject, one, five, one, five, one, five, 55 minutes. Meanwhile, the people working on the SCP-3005 project are getting a bit crazy. And this is where we can now talk about the Fifth Church connection. What is Fifthism based on? What do they worship? There's no god, but there is this idea of a fifth world, a level of another universe, gashes and cuts seeping madness into our reality. We can't comprehend exactly what it is, a multi-dimensional entity, a glitch in the multiverse, but all the same, our world and the fifth world are two planes of existence mingling together, and completely incompatible with each other. What happens when you put two pieces of, say, computer hardware or software that are incompatible? The data gets corrupted or your OS goes crazy. That's what's happening here. The title, A Light That Died, references star signals. Did you know that some stars in the sky are dead, but we still see their ancient image? The Scranton Reality Anchor is a light that died. 
but also the idea that the ancient image of fifism and its indecipherability are causing irreparable localized damage to our universe. The Scranton reality anchor is now exposed to two realities, our world and the fifth world. The force of the fifth world is so strong that it can't decide which one to go with. Now it's transforming our world into a fifthest ideal plane and all exposed to it are having their brains messed with as this foundation site descends into madness. They've been restless. The D-Class. I call them D-Class. I could swear one of them used to be Dr. Watkins. Need something to keep them occupied, but nothing makes sense to them anymore. Everything except the Betamax melted into the floor. I checked the tapes. I, <clears throat> I, I checked the tapes, and they are madness. Everyone keeps changing, but it should be enough to hold them at bay. Maybe now they'll stop playing that damn record on the intercom speakers. Throughout the testing logs, there are hints of this happening. The information is decaying into incoherency. The number five is appearing everywhere randomly. The researcher is talking about, don't worry about the body, and I'm pretty sure that D-Class was Watkins, oh well. Then Dr. Blackbox drills a hole in SCP-3005's containment procedure, as he yearns for its pink light. I knew I needed the pink light, but I didn't want it like they had it. It works on brains different from how bodies work, so I drilled a hole right through the chamber, right at the forehead level. Let a shaft of pink light shine straight in, shimmering like through water. It hums when I touch it, which is the secret. It reaches straight into my head. It doesn't have to leave my organs like apples. What I'm actually learning that doesn't go here, I'll be keeping a notebook for it. This is made pretty clear in this next log where Dr. Blackbox says, these are not the only worlds. 3005 gives you an other place, another self. It outshines your inner light and replaces it. But I'll need to tell a director or an overseer or anyone who can tell everybody to stop using those. All of you, they're chained and lobotomized, but all it takes is to catch the surf. Safe on the shore, but it's the last thing you want to hold when you're drowning. The six-letter black box is Anchor. Stop using the anchors. Now that the anchor has been exposed to another world, it's drowning the people hanging on to it. Stop using the anchors. In the end, Dr. Blackbox enters the containment chamber. Something happens to him, changes him presumably, and we receive the only two cryptic creepy logs at the end as an explanation. The author's explanation sums this all up best. By the way, the author's name is Sel Barrister. Links in the description. But what happens when a Scranton reality anchor becomes confused? What happens when a reality anchor encounters a deeply strange anomaly that the Foundation doesn't fully understand? One that leaves it confused as to which world it's in, which reality it's supposed to maintain, or whether it's still a universe at all? What does it seek to maintain when it's lost its grip on reality? So. This was the first episode of Extra Credit. If this is something that you would like me to do in the future, let me know. But anyway, I hope this helped. This concludes the second lecture. <laughs> Thank you all for listening, if indeed indeed you still are, and you're all dismissed again. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Big Sip, Tomothy, Zargaron, Spencer Arduin, Rubbishbin69, Broken Sketch, Dr. Wolf13, Cupster, Spencer J. Tilp, Vinu, Zazapan, Lamke, Dr. Briggs, Signar, Alatreon, your local foundation agent, Derivative, Lost Boy, Lyndon B. Johnson, O Crap Guy, and James Saba. 
If you would like a special thank you at the end of each of my videos and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash thevolgan. Thank you.